Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Star Sunday. It's tradition in the First Congregational Church of Lebanon to celebrate the Feast of the Three Kings by sharing stars with meditations or reflections that we can sit with throughout the coming year. So perhaps you've shared what your star was this past year or perhaps you're looking forward to something to meditate on this year. And even if you're far away, please reach out. We will send you a star in the mail uh, or take a picture of it and send it to you by, by email. We have so much technology these days. In fact, you're probably watching this from home right now, maybe in your PJs, maybe with a cup of tea. But I'm so glad you've joined us because it is something to celebrate the treasures that were brought to the Christ child oh so many years ago and still we are offering our gifts and our treasures to God. So thank you for joining us and let us begin with Reverend Will and our service. Good morning. Welcome to the First Congregational Church of Lebanon, United Church of Christ. I am the Reverend Dr. Will Sensaba and I am the pastor here at this church and I'm so very glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. This morning, we're celebrating a little something called Star Sunday in honor of Epiphany, which was last Wednesday. And so you can get stars by going to our church website and checking it out. And there is a page there where you can get a star, which will have a word on it. And that word can guide you throughout this year to come. And so, and if you don't really like the word that you get, you can do it again until you find the word that you would like to use as your star word, your guiding word for this year to come. So hopefully you find something in this worship service today that gives you hope, that lights your path, just as the path of the Magi was lit so many years ago. So welcome again to our church, and good morning. And out of chaos, the world began. God spoke. And out of death, resurrected life. God spoke. And out of chaos of our lives, new life begins. God still speaks. Come, let us listen for the voice of God.
Speaking God, in the midst of the chaos of our lives and our world, we seek your word. Take the chaos of our existence and use us to begin to create something new and good. Remind us that no matter how bad things get, you are there. Teach us to turn to you for your creative power in our world amidst all the chaos that swirls around and within us. Speak to us and through us. In the name of Jesus, we ask all these things. Amen.
It's time for the church at prayer. And I'm going to ask at this time for prayers for our country, for peace and for unity throughout our land, but also prayers for peace and unity in our community and wherever you're watching from, hopefully your community as well. And hopefully that peace and unity that we experience in our lives can be shared into other communities, into our nation and into the world. I also pray for all of those who are struggling at this time with their health. And I'm gonna offer a brief prayer and then perhaps we could pray together the Lord's Prayer. Let us join together now and be in the spirit of prayer. Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. Darkness covers the earth and its people, but the radiance of God's light burns away its shadows, illuminates the smallest corner, and heralds in the start of a new dawn, where hearts no longer fear, souls might be set free, nation shall follow nation, and kings and princes bow down in awe before the one who comes to reign. Arise, shine, for the light of the world has come. For love that offers refreshment to all who drink of it, light to all who walk in it, strength to all who hope in it, healing to all who have need of it. This is the God we serve, the God we worship, the God we proclaim this day and all our days with our words and our lives. Let us now join together and pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, the wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, 
and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Good morning. Before we jump into Reverend Will's sermon, uh, both Reverend Mary and myself, we're going to take a minute to share with you a little reflection on our Star Wars from the last year. And I'm going to be completely honest. Um, a few weeks ago, we had a staff meeting and Reverend Will asked us what our Star Wars were. And I couldn't remember mine for the life of me. Um, I do try to put my star somewhere. I'll see it a lot. Um, and I did that. But 2020 was bonkers and I was nowhere I thought I was going to be so I did not see my star as often as I had planned um, but I do find it really interesting how it managed to affect me anyway um, and when I did pull out my star and look at it um, I laughed right out loud my 2020 star word was help <laughs> um, I thought <laughs> I thought that was a pretty great way to sum up 2020 just in general help and um, I remember when I first got my star and I looked at it, I wondered two things. Um, I wondered both how I was going to be able to help others, what um, my star was going to lead me to do this year that could help other people um, throughout the year. And then I also wondered how my star might lead me to be more comfortable asking for help. Um, I really, really, I've always struggled with asking for help, and I know a lot of people do. Help is one of the hardest words to use, especially when you need it most. Um, so I was I was kind of excited to see how, how this star was going to shine for me, and then 2020 happened. Um, and, you know, I've said this before, and it's a really weird thing to say. Um, it was a very crazy year. This year did not go well for a lot of people, but um, I found so much joy in being able to help people this year. Um, so creating these services um, has been a huge, huge uh, place of joy for me. Um, helping other people just kind of learn how to figure out technology, basically learn um, how to create and send video, how to use Zoom so they can connect with people in ways they couldn't before. Um, I spent my year helping people in ways that I never thought I could or would, um, and it really did um, in, in such a crazy and dark time. It did bring me a whole lot of light. Um, it taught me a lot of things. Typically when I'm helping someone with something, um, I'm right there with them. Whether I'm helping someone learn the piano, I'm helping somebody how, uh, uh, figure out how to use their phone, I'm right there, I'm showing them things. So, But I obviously couldn't do that this year. I couldn't be right there with you, helping you out with, thing, with anything. Um, so it taught me how to help differently and how to speak differently and express myself differently. Um, so that was huge. That was huge. And then similarly in asking for help, somehow it was easier for me to ask for help, like hiding behind a computer, typing out, who can help me with this? Um, that came easier than approaching someone and asking for help. And every time I sent an email saying, can you help me create this video? Can you help me by sending me this? Who can help me with this? The response was so huge. Um, it, it made me feel, I, I can't even put it into words, to, to be able to, to know, and it's not that I didn't know this before, but to actually experience asking for help and having so many people be right there and willing and, and, and ready to help. Um, that was an incredible experience for me as well, and I'm really hoping that I can use this word and remember this, kind of this experience from this word um, going forward, both in helping others as well as remembering that it's okay to ask for help myself. Um, so that was kind of my reflection on my star word that I forgot about this year. Um, but like I said, it really did. It really, it found its way to me. And I thought that was so awesome. And you, you at home, you can pause this service right now and get your own virtual star. Um, so future Teresa is going to put the web address on the screen somewhere, hopefully. 
Ta-da! Um, so, so if you navigate to that site, um, it's lebanonfirstcong.org forward slash stargift. Or if you have our website like favorited, it's right on the main page. You can click directly to get to our star gift page. And what'll, what will happen is as soon as you open that page, a star word will generate for you. Every time you go to the page, it will be different unless you go something like 322 times. Um, and if you, like Will said earlier, if you don't like your word or if there's somebody else in your household who would like to get a word, you just refresh the page and a new word's going to come up. So I'm kind of going to show you how it works. I'm going to navigate directly to lebanonfirstkung.org forward slash star gift. Um, and I guess we're going to see what my 2021 20, word is together, right? Let's, let's. All right. All right. I like my word. I like. <laughs> uh, can you even see this? Hold on. Hold on. There it is. There it is. My 2021 star word is enthusiasm. Guys, I think I got this one. I think I think I'm good. I think I'm going to remember it. I think I got it. Um, yeah. So <laughs> that was unexpected. Um, so now that I'm on that page and I have my star, um, if I wanted to give somebody else a star or if I don't like that word, I really um, but all I have to do if I'm on a phone, you just pull down on your screen to refresh the page. It's automatically going to bring up a new star. If you were on a computer up in the top right, there's going to be a little symbol, looks like an arrow and a little swirly do. Um, that is your refresh uh, button. Hit that button. A new star word will come up for you. Friendship. Oh, I like that one too. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping enthusiasm. That was great. So go ahead. Go get your star word. Let us know what your word is. Um, tell us how you plan to use it this year if you wish. Um, and I really hope that all of you get a word that affects you as much as help affected me. Thanks, guys. Bye. I'd like to share my star with you um, on this feast that we're celebrating of the Magi. And I have all of these stars from all the years, over the years. And I just, I love this um, opportunity for reflection. So last year, I got my star. I don't know if you can read that. It says teaching. And I put my star right where I have my tea in the morning. So I sat with it and when I saw teaching, I thought, well, that's an affirmation because I had wanted to do a study group with the church um, about women in the Bible. And I had done some research and I put together a proposal. I got out some books. I was organizing myself and then things kind of stalled. And so every morning I would sit there and see my star about teaching and all year long feeling like, wow, I wasn't getting anywhere with my star. And then just before Christmas, a longtime friend lay dying in the hospital. And as I sat with him, for reflecting on our unique friendship, my star suddenly became quite bright. Fred was a man about my age who had incredible challenges in his life, some as the result of his own choices and some as the random consequences of life. Yet in all, he carried such compassion, such grace, perseverance, and humor. When he could barely walk, he would go out to the corner where near his apartment and he would sit on a bench and he would wave to everybody that went by driving or walking. And you know, there were no strangers in his life, only friends he hadn't met yet. Whenever we would go out, he would just greet everyone with such warmth and he was just so kind. And as he took his last breaths, my star reminded me that it wasn't about me teaching, it was about my teachers. And I have been blessed to have so many teachers in what has certainly been the most challenging year in my professional career. Fred, like many, are the magi in our lives, the stars to guide us. So thank you, Fred, and thank you to all the Magi for guiding us in our life. 
Can you name the movie that the following line is from? It's gonna be a little quiz here for you. Let's try this out. What movie is this line from? Every time a bell rings, an angel gets their wings. All right, you might have done okay on that one. Let's try another one. Life is like a box of chocolates. How about, we're going to need a bigger boat? How about, phone home? And the last one. Maybe you can go five for five here. Frankly, my dear, maybe you went five for five. And if you did, great. And if you didn't, well, that just means that you really aren't watching all of those movies, and that's probably not a bad thing. But sometimes we hear lines, and we put those words together, and we can tell you what movie it's from. Or we hear all of these words together, and we might say, I think, I think those are lyrics for a song. Or maybe that's from a TV show that I saw. We put these words together, and they conjure up something for us, right? So hold on to that thought. When we hear the words, we three kings of Orient are, we can finish the line, we three kings of Orient are. And we have all of these thoughts and ideas that we already bring to that Christmas hymn, to that Christmas song. But we three kings, we three kings are helping to fulfill a prophecy. We three kings are not really kings, but we're wise men. We're seers. We're magicians and, and or astrologers. We three kings are Gentiles from east of the Holy Land. We three kings come with gifts to give to the king of the Jews. And we three kings, we come to contrast the kingdoms of the world. We three kings, we come to give Jews hope for the Messiah. We three kings, real or fictional, are a literary device meant to remind you of the greatest prophet, Moses, and his amazing narrative. The story of the wise men is only told in Matthew's Gospel. That's it. You just heard the whole tale of the Magi. It never mentions how many wise men there were, and it never mentions their names. We added all that stuff into the story later. But Matthew's a great writer, because this story only appears in Matthew's Gospel, we need to know a little bit more about Matthew. First, Matthew is both Jewish and Christian, and this Gospel may have been written around the year 90, about 60 years after the death of Jesus. Matthew has a great command of the Greek language, and he clearly has rabbinic training. Matthew's Gospel is not a straight-up biography of Jesus' life, but it's a theologically sophisticated story of the life and ministry of Jesus. In the passage that was shared with you, Matthew cites both Micah and Isaiah, two Hebrew prophets that we know from the Old Testament. Okay, maybe we don't know them all that well, but they are a part of our heritage, and they would be certainly a part of their heritage. Now, we might read those prophets and their words in passing, but first century Jews, they knew them, and they cherished them. And those prophets, they gave the people hope. So if we think of the Gospels as the story of Jesus told by four different writers with four different audiences in mind, 
that we might think of Matthew's gospel as being written for one particular audience. And in this case, Matthew's audience is written for first century Jews. His gospel is filled with references of the Hebrew prophets, references that first century Jews would get. Now, like song lyrics or lines from famous movies, they, they were ingrained. The prophets were ingrained in their culture and encoded in their DNA. So when they heard or they read the story of Jesus told through Matthew's lens, they read it through their first century Jewish filter. Because that seemed to be Matthew's target audience. But there's something else going on there. Matthew is bringing us back to Moses, his birth narrative. There's a direct parallel. If we remember from the Old Testament, from the Hebrew scriptures, Pharaoh wants to kill all the newborn males. And in the New Testament, Herod wants to kill all the newborn males. Moses escapes. Jesus escapes. And to accentuate the point, an angel of the Lord appears to Jesus' parents and tells them to flee to Egypt and then to stay there until the leader dies and then it's safe to return. So Moses was the savior for the Jews in the time of the Exodus. Jesus is the savior now. Moses gave the law. Jesus gives the law. Moses gave them the commandments. Jesus gives us a new commandment. So why the wise men? Why insert the story of the Magi? See, Matthew is the only source for that story. So what is the significance of the Magi in the Nativity? See, the Magi went to Jerusalem, and that makes sense. Jerusalem, the capital of the Jewish world. And the Magi know that the King of the Jews has been born. King Herod, he hears of it and he's frightened. And because he's scared, everyone else is scared too. And King Herod is a Jew. And King Herod was named by the Romans as the king of the Jews. And he doesn't know where the prophets believe the Messiah to be born. King Herod doesn't know the passage from Micah. King Herod doesn't know the law or the prophets. King Herod seeks an audience with the wise men. And there's a great juxtaposition there. King Herod tries to pull a fast one on the Magi, but they're the wise men. They're wise men and they know it and they figure it out. They figure out what Herod is up to. And the final line of that passage says, they left for their own country by another road. They left for their own country by another road. The wise men were not subject to King Herod. He wasn't their king. They were not his subjects. And they didn't have to do what he said. They could have complied. They could have colluded. They could have been complicit. But they chose a different road. They followed their own path. And maybe that's what made them so wise after all. The tradition of our church is that everyone gets a star. And on that star is a word. 
And that word can guide you in the year to come. And the star is to light your path. And it will give you wisdom on your journey for the coming year. Now, should you choose the path of least resistance, should you choose the road less traveled? Or should you carve out your own path? Know that you are guided by the star. And you are guided by the light of the world. Your star will guide you beyond the kingdom of the Herods. It will guide you to the kingdom where justice and peace rule the day. The kingdom where Jesus isn't just a savior, but the kingdom where Jesus is Lord as well. May the star guide your path. Amen. Continue to light your path. May the light of Christ be a light for you in dark times. And may the word of God be a lamp for your feet, a lamp for your path, a lamp to guide you 
through difficult times. In Jesus' name, amen.